Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for Brain Scratch Commentaries. Commentary. <laughs> of the sequel to Ryan, one of Ryan's most critically acclaimed games of all time, so he says. It is. <laughs> no. Yes, no, it is. Uh, John, okay. Ocarina of Time is one of the most critically acclaimed games of all time. No, I said Ryan's critically acclaimed games of all time. <laughs> and it is. Well, so so there. you're disputing that. <laughs> It's, it's The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask for Nintendo 64. And you can tell I'm recording right off the N64. Look at all this pixel. Look at the scan lines. So Oh, I thought that vintage. guy just had striped boxers on. <laughs> it's Ted's most favorite game of all time. Uh, yeah, um, I don't have the best memories with this one. This is mostly where my Zelda bias comes from. Not that, you know, it's inherently a bad game. It's just that beginning, man. That beginning. I was you have like, not played Skyward Sword or Twilight Princess. No, I haven't, but I played this. Those are so much worse than this. I I played... Twilight Princess was my first 3D Zelda game, which is probably why I enjoyed it as much as I did, because I could, couldn't tell all of the, the, the uh, Ocarina of Time rehashing in there, because it was the first time I'd seen it. But, you know, the beginning took like two to three hours to get through, and it was just tutorial in the fucking village. Skyward Sword is even worse. Yeah. Another time, another commentary. But, you know, we still have about, like, two minutes of intro here because I left this in because it's like, you get the title screen after looking at all this. And it sums, it sums up Clock Town pretty nicely, I believe. But we do have a guest with us. Why don't you introduce yourself before the shock collar goes off? Oh, thank you, thank you. Hey, guys, <laughs> I am Ntom64. I run the Hellfire Commentaries channel. Basically, like Brain Scratch, but inferior. You know, <laughs> hey, just turn the truth, man. And uh, I was brought on kind of as a thank you for bringing Brain Scratch on to the Disney fan, the HFC Disney fan. I'm not really sure about that. But uh, I love Majora's Mask. It's my favorite Zelda game. So uh, you'll hear me squeeing quite a bit throughout this one. Oh, this is this is this is it. This is your favorite one. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah. Next to uh, Link's Awakening, but that's like the uh, handheld counterpart of my favorites. Oh uh, yes. Link's Awakening uh, was mine too. That was my first Zelda game. Like just, same. like not counting the 3D ones. I played the shit out of that on my Game Boy Pocket. Oh, authentic authenticity! I love it. Okay, there we go. Now we got the title screen. Now we can finally begin. And since this is a sequel, technically to not only Ocarina of Time and our Brain Scratch playthrough, I am keeping the name the same as what Ryan named Link in Ocarina of Time. We have to keep so that timeline right. consistent, don't we? Yeah, no, don't you know. I mean, if we didn't, we'd make three different timelines off the name alone. What have I signed on for? <laughs> well, well, you know, that's, that's the thing about the, the Zelda mythos, is that is that this one hero reincarnates, like, over and over again with the same name and in the same clothes. So, he's always named Dumbfuck. <laughs> the legend of Dumbfuck. <laughs> Dumb fuck is the girl, guys. Jesus. <laughs> no, no, no. But just, just picture this, okay? Throughout the history of Hyrule, parents have been naming their children after this hero, possibly in the hope that their child would be the hero. So they've been naming their child Dumb Fuck. Isn't that a plot point in one of the Zelda games? In Wind Waker. I think it was a link to the Dumb Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I did not hear it. Oh, I guess... We're in the list of the fuck. Yes. Okay, I agree. But, yeah, Majora's Mask was one of those I've known since the very beginning. I've seen the advertisements since 2000. I know, you know, it was all around me during the N64 hype. And uh, I immediately went to it after I finished Ocarina of Time for the first time, after I played it on the, um, the GameCube collection that I think it was Nintendo Power that shipped it to subscribers or new readers. I had, and, the, I had the one... Uh pre-order for Wind Waker. Yeah, I think that I think that's what it was. But uh, you know, I played it. I started playing it right after Ocarina of Time. Gave it an hour. I put it down. <laughs> I did not, and that was 2000 and, uh, 2004. I had I did not pick it back up until 2012, eight years later. After and, me and Matt pretty much forced you. Uh, well, Matt wanted me to give the game another chance, and he was pretty much my guide, backseat driver, uh, and. Uh, I figured, you know, why don't you just You're leave that You're doing it wrong, Johnny. Why don't you? Why don't you just leave? Oh, you got something to say, Louis? Yeah. Question: Why was that guy's mask turning left and right independently of his head? Uh, it is be, a separate entity. Yeah. 
Uh, okay. Well, it did look kind of creepy. I'll give them credit for that. Um, this picks up, like, right after Ocarina of Time, like a direct yes, Link. Yes, Link right? is looking for Navi, which I don't know why. Annoying uh, at, at, the, <laughs> at the end of Ocarina, Navi flew off, feeling, I guess, you know, feeling... For some reason. That. Oh, hey. Yeah, she, she just, she just, uh, yeah, after Link puts the Magister back in the pedestal, uh, Navi just flies away. It's like, I have to go now. My Deku tree... Oh, wait. Yeah. It's dead. And, and this was like before all the timeline bollocks came in, so this was just the continuation of the Zelda mythos. And before then, we never really had a direct continuation of any game in the series. Uh, uh, Link's two? Awakening, I think. Zelda 2. Oh, yeah, 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 Zelda 2, you're right. Uh, and, a, uh, and Link's and Awakening, a, I suppose. A Link's Awakening. And Link's Awakening, I suppose. Link's so, uh, 3D game. I can get away yeah. with that. Well, they, they were the first 3D games, so yeah. Yeah, Damn Ocarina it. was just sort of its its own timeline, though, right? I think it was it was the prequel to the prequel, which was linked to the past. Yeah, it was it was technically at the time of the first game. Well, yeah, I, I just mean like at the time, what their official line on where Ocarina sat in the timeline was, it's its own damn timeline. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think even back then we pretty much knew it was the first. Hmm. I like how you start with the freaking heavy shield on your back. You know, the one the one that Kid Link can't even hold up. He has to duck under it like a turtle shell. <laughs> oh no, I, I always assume that it's been like a year or two, so that that's yeah. why he can hold it. Uh, He's retained all his experience from, you know, like being sent back in time after the adventures yeah. in Ocarina, so uh, no, he's stronger, more confident, and you'll notice, just a minute, he's going at these things. Oh, yeah. I hated the. I I still hate the auto jump in these in Zelda. Like I spent the first time I played the game, it spent I spent like ten minutes there. Yeah, but now he does now he does somersaults and side rolls and flippy flips. flips. It, it, if you hate the auto jump, you're gonna love Beyond Good and Evil. Ugh. Ugh. Oh man, I was looking forward to playing that. Don't do that to me. No. Oh, we and so we're in N64 Rainbow Road now for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm I'm guessing this is Wonderland. Uh, there are a lot of things you could read into when Link falls from Hyrule into Termina. Uh, or as I, I like to call it, Pagan Town. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, that's what it is. <laughs> they, they they one of the things Majora's Mask I think does right is that it gives itself its own unique feel compared to Ocarina. It's not well, just in terms of atmosphere, I mean, and that's kind of. It's kind of saying something in the N64 era because, with the with the limited graphics and stuff, there was. Well, this also had the uh, expansion pack. One of two games. One of two games that required it. Yeah, you couldn't pull off as much back then. So the fact that they they managed to give the game its own unique feel and atmosphere, while still using the same art style. They really went above and beyond, though, to like, yeah, to convince people that this is not more of the same from Ocarina, which yeah. might have been a detracting point for some hardcore Ocarina time enthusiasts. Yeah, but it, it's why it had a kind of a bad reputation at first. Mm, why it, it mostly uses assets from Ocarina, so... Well, that that was due to the development time I had. Yeah, they, they, this was the first game he did on his own, right? Or mostly yeah. on his own. Yeah, yeah. And the development time for this, was, I think, I think was only a year. Yeah, basically what was happening was that they were basically telling Aonuma to make an expansion for Ocarina of Time for the disk drive system, which failed massively. Aonuma didn't want to do that, so Miyamoto basically said, make a game in a year and we'll publish it. If not, make the, the make the disk drive game. Yeah. Thank you for bringing it up, by the way, because uh, in uh, HFC Zelda commentaries, it's usually Mexi who handles the trivia, and I was <laughs> basically shitting myself. Like, oh my god, I'm going to forget all the trivia and ruin the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> so that, now I'm just going to sit here and say, that's cool. Oh, that's cool as well. Is that Navi? It's not Navi, but it's cool. <laughs> um, Tattle is the name of this fairy, right? Yes. yes. I will say that I, I do like, out of all of the fairy characters that we have in the Zelda series, I think this one's probably my favorite, because I think it's really the only one with a definable personality. <laughs> Certainly not the ones in Phantom Atlas. Well, yeah, it's like the other fairies are just like helpful little helpers. This guy's only with you because <laughs> he got stuck in the room. <laughs> Freaking skull kid, man! Shut the door. I, I still, I, I, I would argue Minna. Well, I, I, well, not fair. Well, okay. Well, I guess she fills the same role, though. Yeah, if, if it fills the same role, if you're talking strictly fairy, then yeah, 
I think Tidal does a much better job than Navi. I, I don't have much to say on Minna since I haven't played Twilight Princess. Minna is the only thing holding that game together. <laughs> and the dungeons. Don't forget the dungeons. <laughs> The dungeons are good, yeah. yeah. I'll, give yeah. The, I'll give the game credit. It had great dungeon design, and Midna was a very fun character to have along for the ride. And uh, if you'll kindly ignore that military helicopter, I think. <laughs> I don't hear anything. Why. Well, this is not the Zelda I grew up with. <laughs> oh, it, it, it just adds ambience to the whole thing. Majora's Mask is a dog game. It's the darkest game, I think. I, yeah, I would say the darkest in the entire series. Maybe... May, mm -hmm. um, Twilight Princess is sort of up there, but uh, I would say Majora's Mask, not only because of the the grim setting, it, it's all more of the implications that you can get. Everything dies. <laughs> well, no, I mean, just like... Such just as this thing the, here. The, oh, just from all the like subtle little subtexts and... Things like a butler's son here. Read. Yeah, I mean, like this right here. We don't... You know, newcomers won't know what this is. It just looks like a Deku Scrub, you know, a tree, but... You know, you like read into the story, and you get the idea that this thing right here is actually the petrified son of a butler we'll meet later down the road. And oh, like, that that asshole butler who goes five hundred yeah. miles an hour. That asshole yeah. butler also lost his son. Yeah, but he could he could slow down a little bit. Let me catch up. <laughs> he does apologize for that. You could put the bunny hood on and stop being such a fucking pleb. I didn't have the bunny hood. <laughs> well, maybe you should get the bunny hood then. How am I supposed to know to get the bunny hood? I'm trying to go to the dungeon, and save the world, man. <laughs> well, if you're just going dungeon, 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 you're clearly playing Majora's Mask wrong, my friend. Well, okay. Well, the, here's the thing: the first sub, the first side quest I tried to do was the one with the the the, the lady and her boyfriend. Oh, I oh, have boy. to beat like four dungeons in order to do that one, so I just wasted an hour of my time. <laughs> yeah, it's Mr. Smiles. <laughs> uh, Majora's Mask is kind of hard to get through at 100 percent because of the way it's organized, but I guess we'll see that as we go. Oh, that's one thing I've been meaning to ask. Is this a all mask run? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. I am getting everything in this game. I am getting all the masks, all the hard pieces, all the upgrades. Oh, sweet baby uh, Jesus. Yeah. So when I finally play this game, all I need to do is do what I watched you do already. I don't have to figure any of this shit out myself. What? Why are you jump cutting through your expressions, man? Sit still. I, I like it. Just makes it, like, extra creepy. Well, he is creepy. Well, it's supposed it's kind of supposed to I think it's supposed to be an anime effect, but it's not exactly in the right art style or graphical style for that. So it just comes off as weird. Just meant to be unsettling. Yeah, unsettling is the word, but it, it gets pretty comical in later down the road. But we'll see what I mean in the next part. <laughs>